Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy. I'll be hosting today's show again. Uh, <clears throat> on the hazardous weather graphic, we've got some highlighted areas on here. Uh, the yellow area, that's uh, snow advisory. That's out uh, for 6 a.m. tomorrow to uh, about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And that's uh, for four, three to seven inches of snow along the Richardson Highway, south of the uh, Edgarton Cutoff area there. So lighter amounts expected to the north of that area with the heaviest down to the south, again along the Richardson Highway, of the amounts of three to seven inches. And there's a high wind warning out for the uh, northeast Gulf Coast here, eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, spe specifically the Yakutat area, or you could say from Cape uh, Fairweather to uh, Cape Suckling. And that's when the next storm coming up tonight, and looks like uh, tomorrow, in, from about uh, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m., could see gusts of 60 miles an hour in that zone. And then there's a high wind watch out for uh, the Prince of Wales Island coast, specifically the outer coastline. And that's for uh, beginning this evening, continuing overnight, uh, that storm affecting that area first, and also looking for gusts of 60 miles an hour with another round of uh, moderate to heavy rain to go along with it. Looking at the satellite imagery, here's the system coming up today that brought the heavy rains and uh, moderate to heavy rains and gusty winds uh, along the coast on the winds there, pulling northwestward now. And it'll begin to weaken here rapidly. Next system down to the south uh, developing, that's gonna follow the same track and actually get a little stronger than this one was. But the actual gradient, uh, won't be that much tighter than it is with this in advance of this uh, first front here. So we're looking for winds at 60 miles an hour. Today seeing winds 50 to 57 miles per hour with uh, Cape Decision seeing the gust of 57 miles an hour. I believe Cape Spencer had 50 mile an hour wind gusts this afternoon and uh, more rain to go along with that. And looking at this again, we have another band right through here that uh, brought rain to Kodiak and into the uh, Iliamna area and then some uh, lighter precipitation extending northwest in this part of the cloud shield, breaking out here over the central interior. Dry conditions, it's just thick cirrus moving in across the southeast Copper River Basin there in the Wrangells, and just clouds up uh, to the north there. Any precipitation was quite light and isolated, if occurred at all, just saw some reports of uh, patchy fog along the Arctic coast, otherwise not, not a bad day up there. And we got clouds and gusty winds up to 35 miles an hour occurring there at St. Lawrence Island today. And also that extends down to the Eastern Aleutian, actually the Alaska Peninsula had some gusty winds as well. The few showers there occurring at the, uh, along the Alaska Peninsula and also for on Alaska. And the Pribilofs had some showers. Otherwise, uh, isolated showers out to the west towards Shimia with uh, kind of a pretty good break there over the central Bering and Aleutian areas. On the chart, uh, low pressure here off the southwest coast uh, continues to slowly weaken. Now starting to drop southward and the gradient between this low and higher pressure over the uh, Russian Far East, that's giving uh, fairly good winds out of the north, as I mentioned, gusting 35 miles an hour at Savunga, extending all the way down and around northwest 35 in gusts uh, at Cold Bay there in the Alaska Peninsula with uh, showery conditions, extending on up to this trough into northeast Bristol Bay, again with the uh, nearly half an inch of rain falling in the last 12 hours, Akiak, Kodiak, and also up at Iliamna, and then scattered mixed precipitation in across the uh, Kuskokwim Valley, depending on your elevation. Otherwise, just patchy fog, winds pretty light in the Arctic coast and north slope areas, and breaking out here ahead of the storm system to the southeast into the 40 mile country back into the mid Tanana Valley, as well as uh, a little bit in south central Alaska, otherwise mostly cloudy. And the tight gradient in advance of this front, as I mentioned, brought those gusty winds along with the uh, fairly good rainfall amounts uh, 
two-thirds of an inch falling at Huna today, and Petersburg picked up 1.6 tenths, and then Juneau had about seven tenths as well. With the uh, gusty winds right along the coast there at 50, 60 miles an hour, that all moving northwestward, and it'll be uh, moving over the eastern North Gulf Coast, or at least probably toward Cordova early this evening. Otherwise, uh, take a look at tonight, you can see that low center uh, merges actually with uh, this low here, and then one back through here, those two merge together, pull northwestward. This one kind of just weakens into a trough, drops back to the southwest to something like this tonight. And then we have a 974 millibar low rolling up the coastline. Again, perfect setup for gusty winds and the high wind watches out Prince of Wales Island coast and the North Gulf coast. Probably see gusts above 60 miles an hour. Another round of moderate to heavy rainfall to go along with it again. And that'll gradually be pushing slowly in towards uh, Cordova and then into the Sound for tomorrow. Tuesday, that low tracks right up into Central Cook Inlet, right over the top of Seldovia, Kenai area, <clears throat> at 969 millibars. But you can see the strongest gradient continues here across the Panhandle, especially the North Panhandle about Yakutat, and not so much here along the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound. Consequently, winds won't be that uh, big of an issue but uh, another good round of rain, heaviest from about Cordova in across the northern panhandle. Gusty winds uh, and rain all the way down to Dixon entrance, but uh, amounts will be lighter there than it will be up to the north and northwest. And then a wind weather advisory uh, late tonight, early tomorrow, that lifts northward, so look for snow. Uh, again, three to seven inches here along the Richardson Highway, and this by afternoon when the front pushes northward will begin to improve there. And pretty mild air coming in with that, so probably uh, whatever showers occur will be in the form of rain below 1,500 or 2,000 feet. Pretty good conditions here on the back side of that, with some partly sunny skies breaking out from North or Bristol Bay on up across the Yukon Cusquam Delta, Seward Peninsula dry, maybe some flurries on the uh, up here along the western Arctic coast, and a pretty widespread area of showers, rain, fog. Low clouds, drizzle conditions there from uh, St. Matthew Island across the Pervolos down into the Alaska Peninsula as that low slowly drops southward. And we'll see, uh, takes off to the southeast here on Wednesday. And this other low continues to weaken and pull back toward eastern Norton Sound. South of that, mixed rain and snow showers, or snow and rain and snow showers. Uh, a little more persistent right under the trough, scattering out toward the Alaska Range. And the next storm coming northward here, uh, 968 millibars, another pretty good one. And so late in the day, that'll increase the winds and rain once again along the south coast of the Panhandle inland and then gradually pushing northward throughout the day, just some periods of light rain or showers to the north Gulf Coast and periods of light snow up over the western north slope on down into the possibly the Notak Valley and for the lows tonight, or yeah, low temperatures tonight under mild southerly southeast winds, 40s, lower 50s to the panhandle. Otherwise, mostly in the 30s here, south central Alaska, lower 40s Kodiak, mid 20s Copper River Basin, into the uh, Tanana Valley, and then teens, Arctic coast into the Brooks Range, a little milder in the west, and upper 30s, lower 40s for the remainder of the area. And then taking a look at the uh, high temperatures tomorrow afternoon. 50 to 55 southeast coast, uh, mid to upper 40s southern Alaska, mid to upper 30s there in the Tanana Valley, 20s Brooks Range Arctic coast, and looks like uh, mid 40s for the Aleutians in the Bering Sea and near 40 for Nome and Gamble. And the lows following morning, Wednesday morning, lower 20s eastern Arctic coast, uh, actually the entire stretch of the coastline there, milder now up toward the uh, Brooks Range here, Arctic Village only down in the lower 20s. Upper 30s near 40, South Central Alaska. Upper 30s along the Southwest Coast. And the Panhandle in the 40s and your highs for the afternoon. <clears throat> 48 to 53 degrees for the Panhandle. Mostly in the mid to upper 40s, Southern Alaska to near 50, Bristol Bay. Mid 40s, Tanana Valley. Again, milder air pushing northward with that system. And then 20s from the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coast. And out in the West, not a lot of uh, change out there temperature wise. Highs in the mid 40s, lower 40s to the Pervolofs. A little cooler there on those gusty north winds, pulling some chillier air down uh, across the Seward Peninsula into St. Lawrence Island. So your high probably will occur earlier in the day. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
First flying weather graphic for Tuesday morning. IFR up here from the uh, Central Brooks Range, western portions of the North Slope, Mars over the Arctic coast. Southward into the uh, Koyukuk, maybe Kobuk Valley, marginal VFR here, Seward Peninsula, central eastern Bering Sea, and in some areas inland along the coast, especially the Auckland uh, Mountains, Kilbrook Mountain areas, Yukon Delta, up uh, the river a ways, and down across Bristol Bay, but VFR here for the Aleutians, uh, except way out west at Attu Island, and Kodiak marginal VFR in the interior, Southeast interior with uh, marginal VFR here over the Gulf of Alaska. Then for the afternoon, moisture coming up. So we've got uh, IFR here into the North Gulf Coast and also up here over the eastern interior. IFR, northern panhandle to start, and then uh, IFR up there over the North Slope. And for the afternoon Wednesday, still IFR here for the North Gulf Coast, continued uh, south southeasterly flow. Narrow band here along the Alaska Range back out to the west with some IFR over areas of the eastern Panhandle and northern uh, Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay area and looks like some improvement on down to the south. And for the afternoon on Wednesday, marginal VFR for the southeast coast, Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound area, North Gulf Coast, and also uh, here along and south of the central Alaska Range, eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, VFR, Central Interior, Tanah Valley, 40 mile country up into the, uh, well, northward there to about the Porcupine River. And then marginal VFR, Koyukuk Valley breaking out in the Kobuk Valley, and then some more VFR there for Selaway, Kotzebue, on up toward Kivalina, Noatak Valley, IFR, Brooks Range, cutting northeastward there across the north slope to the eastern Arctic coast. Good VFR out here for the entire Aleutians and most of the southern Bering Sea with uh, marginal conditions north side of the Alaska Peninsula. Anatuvik and Anagan tomorrow, both VFR for Lake Clark and Merrill. Uh, VFR becoming marginal with uh, moisture slipping on up from the southeast uh, into the afternoon. And for rainy, starting out VFR and more rapidly becoming, or conditions deteriorating, becoming probably VFR, especially on the eastern entrance with a bit uh, more moisture uh, coming up into that area, then there will be farther to the south. And for windy, VFR becoming marginal in the afternoon. Isabel, VFR becoming IFR during the afternoon. Mentasta, different story, it'll be IFR to start. And then as that first band lifts north and northwest, it'll become marginal to possibly IFR late in the afternoon. And for Tanita, marginal VFR becomes IFR probably by mid to late morning. And Portage, marginal VFR trending toward IFR, especially on the eastern entrance. Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels, uh, 4,000 to 6,000 feet here in the central interior. 2,000 just south side of the Brooks Range across St. Lawrence Island, Privilofs to the Fox Islands. And then 8,000 feet or so here over the southeast coast. 4,000 feet for Kodiak, and really still about 2,000 feet there out over the Bering Sea and Aleutians. Icing with that northerly fetch of moisture here could be some areas of rime or mixed icing below uh, 4,000 feet, uh, mostly on the light side. Could be some patchy areas of considerable moderate, but uh, it'll be more of a light condition there. Heavier icing of the heavier moderate, considerable moderate, coming up the north Gulf Coast of that next storm, all the way from the northern Panhandle westward into across Prince William Sound, also here along the western Alaska Range, and lighter icing possibilities with that first uh, kind of warm front type of moisture coming into the uh, eastern interior. Jet stream, low tracking northwest here at this elevation, and the other one back out over the eastern Aleutians, good southeast flow across the Panhandle mainly at about 100 knots, up and over the top of this ridge, about 120 knots. Otherwise, a strong jet south of the Aleutians. Do have a north northeasterly branch here at about 50 to 70 knots. Otherwise, uh, the main jet is to the south. 9,000 feet, uh, pretty strong winds. This low lifts northwestward into southern Cook Inlet tomorrow, 50 to 60 knotters coming into the North Gulf Coast, right up uh, across the Talkeetna Mountains. Interior pretty windy, 25 to 45 knots and 45 to 55 here over the Panhandle. North northwest, 30 to 40 coming around the backside. Same pattern, 3,000 feet, uh, 55 knot winds up to the North Gulf Coast. Some strong easterlies in the central interior, as high as 50 knots, 35 along the coast of the Panhandle. Turbulence, moderate chop, good portion there in the central interior in the North Gulf Coast of the Panhandle.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to, to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say, mm -hmm. that this line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through 1,000 feet and above. That's your 1,000-foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, around the peak of a mountain. It kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, Imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what it, the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter Neil, the augmented help. reality I like sandbox. It. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version. Sweet. Built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox. Oh, wow. And then okay. the Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox, too, is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill. Okay. And we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, into wow. that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow. That, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping is an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. Would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back to uh, today's sea ice analysis. Uh, continuing to show ice expanding out here along the central eastern Beaufort Sea coast and uh, also slowly coming south and southwest out here, especially up through here. And with uh, cold northerly winds forecast, uh, especially out through here later on, next several days, two or three, four days from now, this portion up here is gonna come kind of southeastward and a uh, fair amount up through here and to a lesser extent down through here. There'll still be a gap here. This will probably pinch off somewhat over the next four or five days, but this definitely will stay open. Coastal water forecasts for the southeast coast here. <clears throat> After the strong winds tonight, tomorrow still gales on the south coast there, 35 to 40 knots out of the south. Southeast 45 or 40 to 50 knots here to the north with seas up to 20 feet. Lynn Canal, south 15 tomorrow, southeast 25, Stevens Passage, gales for uh, Clarence Strait. And those, uh, again, gale force winds coming back in, probably in the afternoon, that next big storm off to the southwest, 40 knots, 12-foot seas, Clarence Strait, 50-knot winds here along the central and south coast, out of the southeast, seas uh, either side of 20 feet, 40 knotters up there on the north coast. And for uh, Prince William Sound, storm warning out tomorrow, <clears throat> southeast 50 knots with 13-foot seas, and eastern north Gulf Coast, east southeast release, Sustained 50 knots, 20 foot seas, north 35 for the western North Gulf Coast, and then small craft advisories for northwest winds 25 to 30 knots, Kamishak Bay into the Barrens, seas up to 10 feet, small craft advisories, northern Cook Inlet, winds 25 knots. I'll look for Wednesday, big drop off in the winds here, Prince William Sound, east 15, seas back down to 3 feet, and uh, 30 knots for the eastern North Gulf Coast, 20 knots out of the east now. For the west side, in the Cross of Barren Islands, 15 knot winds, east-northeast, Kamishak Bay, <clears throat> and southern Cook Inlet, northern Cook Inlet, even lighter, east of 10, seas back down to 2 feet. Alaska Peninsula tomorrow, westerly is 20 to 25, 7 to 8 foot seas, not bad in Bristol Bay, northwest to 10, picks up to 20 knots there from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, north 20, Shillikoff Strait, northwest 30, the east side of Kodiak Island. And Wednesday's outlook, <clears throat> Lighter winds northeast at 15 there on the east side of Kodiak and Shelikoff Strait pretty light mainly out of the west, northwest or west-northwest here for the Alaska Peninsula at about 15 knots with six to seven foot seas. Light winds for Bristol Bay out of the west with three foot seas. Fox Islands tomorrow, Fox Islands tomorrow, Tuesday, northwest 25 to 30 seas uh, 
seven or six to 11 feet, uh, highest course on the Bering Sea side, and 25 to 30 knot winds there for the central Aleutians. 25 knot winds out of the northwest all the way back to Shimianatu. And the outlook for Wednesday brings some gales into the picture here from about uh, Kiskaram Chitka Island eastward across the central Aleutians northwest, 35 knots, seas uh, 11 to 17 feet. And uh, eastern Aleutians, gales, 30 to 35 knot winds with uh, seas 9 to 14 feet. Southwest coast tomorrow, south of Nunavak Island, uh, northeast of 20, seas 4 feet. Otherwise, Nunavak Island up to St. Lawrence on small craft advisories. North to northeast, 25 with 6 foot seas. North 25, St. Matthew Island, prairie lofts, north 30 knots, 10 foot seas. And uh, that'll turn northwest on Wednesday. Looks like gales for St. Matthew Island, northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, north 30, and just 15 knot winds here for the southwest coast. Up across the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, pretty light winds, west-southwest 5 to 10, light northerlies there for the central coast at 10 knots, seas 2 feet or less. And then the increase here as you head southwest, northwest 20, or northeast at 20, Cape uh, Beaufort all the way down to Wales, northeast 25 with 8 foot seas. And for Wednesday, change to kick those up to gales. Gales uh, will be out from Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, northeast 35 knots, 12 foot seas. 30 knot northeasterlies there, so small craft advisories on the west side, 25 knot northeasterlies here, central and east side, turn east toward demarcation point, but small craft advisories with uh, six to eight foot seas all through that area. And for uh, tonight, uh, a few flurries up there, otherwise not too bad, pretty dry in the interior, uh, high wind watch out for Prince of Wales Island coast, 60 mile an hour wind gusts later this evening, till shortly after, or for tonight, and then a high wind watch out uh, late tonight and for tomorrow for the Yakutat area, gusts above 60 miles an hour. Another round of heavy rain to go with this that pushes westward. And on Wednesday, there's the next storm that'll affect the panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.